My name is Megan. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I thought I would have some fun this week and join in on Friday Sews. I have really enjoyed watching everybody's videos and I thought I would try to be a joiner and um, hop in and see if I can join the fun. Um, so it is March and spring is pretending to come out in Calgary. And this week I posted a video with some of my spring sewing plans. Um, I was super ambitious uh, and posted four and I thought maybe I might even get them all done in the first two weeks of March. But then my daughter, who's in grade one, unfortunately was identified as a close contact of a positive COVID case. And so here in Alberta, that means that she has to quarantine for 14 days uh, and we live in an apartment, so she can't leave the apartment. So we are spending all of our time together while I work from home and she is here. Um, sometimes on my lunch breaks, I've been taking some time to cut out a project or um, do a little bit of sewing, but Emma's home and so that's not, um, that's not happening this week. But um, I did get a few projects hemmed last night that I'm pretty excited about. Um, I have two out of three of my spring plans tops um, cut out and one of them actually completely made. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I thought that joining Friday Sews would be a great chance for me to tell you a little bit more about myself, introduce myself and my channel and what I do. Um, my channel is brand new. I've only um, been, I've only posted uh, four videos so far. This will be the fifth, uh, but it's something I've been thinking about doing for a very long time. I love watching YouTube videos. Um, I've been watching them for years and years now. I watched makeup videos and cooking videos, and uh, then when I started sewing again, of course, I naturally progressed to sewing videos. And boy, is there ever a wealth of resources and awesome people in the sewing community here on YouTube. So I'm hopeful that I can come sit at your cool kid table and that you'll let me come along for the ride. Uh, last night I was getting ready for bed and I hopped on YouTube as you do and came across a tag video. So I also thought it'd be fun to introduce myself and do that tag video at the same time and sort of um, do one and the other. And so it's the hashtag so curious tag from Michelle Sews again. And so I have a bunch of questions here that I thought I would go through. And if you enjoy this video, maybe you'll also join in on Michelle's tag. So her first question was, um, when did you start sewing? And so I started sewing when I was, it was 1992, 1992, so I was about eight. And my best friend and I took sewing lessons and our moms would drive us into a different town um, than the one we lived into every Thursday night. And we would sew at the local fabric store, which is still open. It's called Veronica Sewing Supplies and it's in Kandersley, Saskatchewan. And uh, Veronica of Veronica Sewing Supplies was a friend's mom. And unfortunately we lost her this year. So I was very sad to hear that news, but her legacy of teaching people to love to sew lives well on. So I learned to sew um, through those classes. We took them for a few years and then I stopped. And then I sewed again in high school for home ec. Uh, we took home ec in grade eight and nine. And so I did a little bit of sewing then made a Halloween costume here and there, and then I put the sewing machines away when I moved to Calgary to go to university. Uh, when my daughter was born, I got interested in doing it again, and um, I, I might go into that in another video someday about the hows and whys of, of picking the hobby back up again. But that was about about five years ago now, that um, maybe, maybe closer to six years ago that I started sewing again. I picked up a used machine off of Kijiji, and um, picked up the hobby and then five years ago uh, my mom passed away and I inherited her serger and the sewing machine that she had bought in 1992 when I started taking those lessons and it's a Janome and it runs like butter so it's a great machine and I do think of my mom when I sit down at the machine to sew and um, she was a seamstress she loved to sew and my aunts loved to sew and so I have a long family history of the craft. Question number two is what is the worst garment you have ever made? And so I had to really think about this one because um, I work in education, so I'm not a teacher, but I work with teachers and there's a strong philosophy of um, learning and a lifelong learning. And so there are lots of garments that I've made that haven't worked out, but as cheesy it sounds, I have learned something from all of them, be it uh, how, to, how to choose the appropriate fabric or how to pick a pattern that's right for you or um, size adjustments I might make. I don't always apply all of those lessons to all the projects that I do. Sometimes I get lazy. 
uh, often I get lazy, but when I really pay attention, um, I'm pretty happy with the work that I do. But I would say that um, the garment I made that was probably the least successful was a um, empire waist maternity dress. So it had long sleeves, um, a pretty high neck, a little bit of a bishop sleeve gathered with elastic, uh, an empire waist, and it was made out of this like semi-sheer um, polyester mystery knit that I got at Fabricland. It was fuchsia. And um, I look like a giant pregnant pink bottle of Pepto-Bismol in it. It was not flattering. It was the wrong fabric. It didn't have the appropriate amount of vertical stretch or horizontal stretch. Uh, it didn't breathe. It was awful. So I think I wore it once um, and then I put it into the scrap bin. What is the garment you're most proud of? I would say whatever comes off the machine is the one that I am most proud of. That rush of like, oh, I did this. I made this. I have a job where I don't make anything. I write and I advise and I problem solve, but I don't make anything. There's nothing tangible that I leave behind. So in sewing, I love that. I love that I have made something with my two hands and my brain, and it's actually a useful thing that I have made. It's a garment I can wear. It's pretty, it has a purpose. Um, but I would say that the, the item I'm probably most proud of is a leopard print wrap skirt made out of rayon. Uh, that I made this summer and I'm I just I love the way it makes me feel that's why I wanted to learn how to sew uh, in part because I wasn't particularly inspired by any of the clothes that are available in my size um, or in my price range and I wanted to have more fun and as much as I can get away with wearing blue jeans and black t-shirts or striped t-shirts um, or navy cardigans and business suits that I wear most of the time. I wanted to have more fun with my clothes. And so this leopard print wrap skirt, I wore it out on the one date night that my husband and I got to go on this summer and I had a number of strangers stop me on the street to tell me how amazing it was. And it really is. I only have one um, pretty bad picture of it, but I'll put it in and uh, I'll have to pull it out of the closet, give it a steam and then give it a twirl. But I didn't want to do that for a Friday, so it was today, so. How big is your fabric stash? So I keep my fabric in um, Ikea Calyx shelves in our bedroom. So um, if you're familiar with those cubbies, I have my fabric all uh, ruler folded and it fills 12 cubes of Ikea Calyx shelving. And that is too many. So I would like to get that down. I think that four would be a reasonable number of cubes. And so um, as much as I have trouble holding to fabric bands, I, I really think that I need to stop buying some fabric and either soap what I have or de-stash before I pick up some more so that it can stay within what, what I deem to be a reasonably sized fabric stash for me. Um, question number five, how big is your pattern stash? Uh, well, my pattern stash is largely digital. I'm a big fan of independent PDF patterns and so um, size, size doesn't matter, does it? Um, but in reality, I probably own a couple hundred patterns. I also have um, paper patterns that I store, like big four paper patterns. Um, many that I have been given or inherited from people. Um, I used to subscribe to Love Sewing Magazine, and so there was always one or two mag um, paper patterns in with the magazine that I have. So I probably have 30 or 40 paper patterns in my collection that I keep in the closet in Rubbermaid um, bins. And I probably should de-stash those too, but you never know. Like I, you never know. I, I'm kind of intimidated to sew with them, but I don't think it might be. A lot of them are, you know, there's a lot of good stuff in there. I also have some vintage patterns that are really fun that I hold on to for more for sentimental reasons than for um, the actual possibility that I'll ever make a Betsy Johnson three-piece suit from the 70s and a pattern that was my mom's, but who knows? Uh, question number six, how do I organize my patterns? As I mentioned, most of them are digital, so they're just stored in a Google Drive. Um, I also have some, um, a pretty good collection of those digital patterns printed on AO sheets. So a couple years ago, um, you couldn't have AO printing done in Calgary for an affordable price. I actually had some patterns printed at a print shop and they cost like 30 bucks a page to have those large scale patterns done. And then um, now there are, there are at least three companies here in Calgary that do them locally. So I like Sew YYC, um, Practical Pixie Printing, and then uh, Rick Rack, which is my local fabric store, also does large scale printing. So 
um, my times my time and I don't want to spend it taping patterns together so if the pattern is more than 20 pages of taping I'm gonna have it printed large scale and I'll just either trace it or I'll just be bold and I'll just cut right into it so I keep those large scale patterns if I haven't cut them in rolls hanging in my closet in a garment bag which is actually a really great way to store them because they fit um, or some of them are sort of the ones that I'm using right away or have traced are just tucked into the side of the closet so I will I'll try to put a photo or a video of that in so you can see but it's a closet I store them in a closet you can't see them when the closet door is closed so um, who knows how many I have I sh probably should start organizing these things on the spreadsheet or in Trello but um, again and that's time I could be sewing with or laying on the couch watching YouTube videos so the last question that Michelle asked was PDF or paper patterns and why and I have sort of touched on that already um, I like independent patterns that I can download um, in part because I find them to be more accessible in, in the directions, in the support, um, and the ease and the sizing is more straightforward than a big four or commercial pattern. Um, the instructions definitely hold your hand more, and if you get stuck, odds are good that there's a community on Facebook or Instagram of people who can help you out. Um, the big four patterns are a little bit intimidating, and so when I have made them I've had to really put some time into measuring the pattern pieces calculating the seam allowances to figure out how to pick the right size based on the ease and what I'm looking for and what my preferences would be so I've only made skirts um, with big four patterns that I've had success with I've been too concerned and afraid to try a top but um, I would like to try it this summer so uh, stay tuned and maybe we'll give that a go um, I don't know for Friday sews the other things that I'm sort of working on this week Yet last night I was playing with my cover stitch machine and I um, had finished off a Pattern Emporium tank top. It's their Every You tank and it has a curved hem that uh, is high low, so it's higher in the front than in the back. Uh, it's got a seam down the back and so I was testing that out um, based on a remnant scrap that I had just to see the fit of that tank top and did I like it. And so I was playing with my cover stitch and I had I have a variegated thread in the looper and I did a reverse cover stitch and I was pretty pleased with that. Um, that turned out quite well. I thought it was pretty cute. Um, just the variegated, the variegated thread adds a really nice touch and it was, you know, it's, it's a top that I'm only going to wear either around the house or to zoom by, I think. Um, so I didn't, you can see I didn't bother changing the color in my overlocker. Uh, I didn't, didn't feel like it. So it was more of like a wearable muslin and so I had some fun with that but I really enjoyed that pattern it's the Every Me by Pattern Emporium um, I think it's great for particularly for working out like it's long enough the version that I made is long enough in the back to cover sort of my butt in my uh, tight yoga pants or whatever I don't I don't run unless it's to the fabric store so um, it's great for for that kind of thing or just hanging out at home and I was quite pleased with that the other things I'm working on is I still have some patterns I need to trace off this week. The Lucida dress pattern I have to trace and cut out and I'd like to get that finished because I think that um, spring actually will be around the corner. It's supposed to be about 10 degrees here on the weekend and so well, um, my daughter can't leave the house. Fortunately, her COVID test came back negative, but she can't leave the house. Um, it's possible that I can. So anyway, um, I had a lot of fun filming these videos so far and I've really enjoyed the feedback that I've gotten and sort of commenting on the other videos and the connections within the community and um, having a really good time. So um, I, I hope that you come back. This is just a quick little video and a sewing tag video too, but uh, not too much on the plans this week. And I'm looking forward to posting some videos next week, including a pattern review of a sew over at top. So. Anyway, uh, I hope that your weekend is fantastic and that you have lots of time to sew. Bye. <laughs>